Okay, my session's going to be a little bit interactive. So everyone, when I say good morning, say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, great to see you. So I'm really excited about today. Okay, I love events like this. I love uh, events that are all about ideas. Technology, design, the future in our community. I'm really excited. And I think what's going to happen is this. You're going to watch all these talks. And maybe most of them, maybe all of them, are going to inspire you. You're all really clever people, and you all love ideas. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So it's fantastic that I get to share the room with you today. And I think you're going to be inspired. These talks are going to be amazing. But I don't think that's the best part of today. The best part of today is the coffee break, OK? And the best part of today is lunch. And why is that? It's because you're going, all the, your mind's whirring while you're sitting in this room. You're taking on all these ideas. And you're making connections. And you're, think, you're making synergies with things that you already know about. And you have more questions that you want to explore with the speakers that you see. And all of a sudden, you're like, Ah, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got this idea. And it's really exciting. It's an amazing potential opportunity. You may not have the opportunity to be with this group of people again. So what are you going to do about it? That's the question. What are you going to do today? Here's the thing. Having conversations about ideas, as exciting as it sounds, can be incredibly scary and unnerving, right? It's, it's one thing to say, oh, how was the weather today? Oh, wonderful. And you know, say, oh, I met Jim. We talked about the weather. Well, that's not what today's about. There's so much more potential than that for today. The trouble of sharing ideas is it carries a lot of psychological risk. It's a bit like jumping into the sea off a cliff, but just for your brain. Okay? And that's, that's the emotions that you feel and the energy that you feel when you're out there having that exciting conversation. You, you've got all sorts of fears about rejection and ridicule and ignorance and failure that you're bringing with you as you're like, I've got this great idea. I really want to share it, but I can't. In improvisation, we have a word for what happens when we stop that. It's called blocking. OK? It's your first of a few improv lessons for today. And what does blocking look like? Well, generally, it's, a, it's, it's when you, you might do it inside your own head. You might censor your thoughts before you speak. Can I, does anyone do that? Do you ever stop yourself before you say your idea? <gasps> what will they think of me? Ah, especially at work, especially in a meeting, especially with your boss or your colleagues, and especially here with all these clever people. You don't want to look stupid, right? OK? So what we often do is we block. We stop ideas from going any further. Okay? And what do we do? We have polite chat. Oh, polite chat. Here we are with 100 geniuses, 100 amazing people who love ideas, and we're going to have polite chat. Let's do polite chat now. Let's get it out of the way. Here's the rules. I'm going to ask you a question, and on the count of three, you're all going to shout your answer back to me. Okay, you got it? Ready? Here we go. What did you have for breakfast? One, two, three. Nothing. Nothing. Get that man a sandwich. All right. OK, you, what word would you use to describe the weather this morning? One, two, three. How was the traffic this morning? One, two, three. Yeah. Who was your favorite sports team? One, two, three. In their last game, did they win, lose, or draw? One, two, three. And how did you feel about that? One, two, three. OK, so we've all had polite chat. That's over with now. Now we can get on with the serious business, right? OK, great. But I actually tricked you. You guys just improvised. You were spontaneous and in the moment with me. And what is improvisation? It's creating something in the space in front of you with what you have, OK? That's improvisation. It's not a thing. It's a process. But I believe this process is the key to having amazing conversations today and having amazing conversations all the way through with the networks that you build today and with colleagues at work and with people at home and friends. And your, your life can be transformed by a few simple principles that I'm going to walk you through. Everyone improvises, including you. You've improvised today already, I'm sure. Now, when you think about improvisation, I do comedy. I teach comedy improvisation. But there's other kinds that are part of everyday life. You probably listened to some music this morning that featured some improvisation. If you like football, and you, you see a teammates do a clever one-two you know, and pass and break through and score a goal, that's improvisation. There's improvisation in dance. There's improvisation in theater. Improvisation's all around us. And there's improvisation at work and in regular conversations. So what are the principles of improvisation? Okay? I'm going to tell you a few really quick ones and give you a quick crash course. We're going to do an activity, and then we're going to summarize. So the first thing is play. All right, here we go. First thing is we have to play. Playing is so easy for children, and it's so hard for grown-ups. Why is that? Well, when you're about 9 or 10 years old, your brain develops the ability to self-censor. Oh, how wonderful it is that you can start to control your emotions and the things you say and the things you do. But there's a negative side. You start to censor your, your ideas and your creativity as well. 
So when we start doing improvisation, the very first session, we make sure that we do lots of games and activities that get people just in the, in the vibe of playing, which is great. It creates a great atmosphere. People get in a good mood. And then we can start talking about other improvisation principles like embracing failure. Why embrace failure? Because there's no creativity without failure, OK? Failure is how we learn. It's how humans learn. It's how we iterate. It's how we generate new ideas. It's how we create great things. If you work in an organization that's a zero failure culture, you probably work in an organization that's a zero innovation culture. So you have to embrace failure. You manage it, and you make, it, you make smart failure. You control it, and you experiment, and you design for it. But you must fail to learn and innovate. And it's the same in improv. Failing is normal. It's how we learn. Next thing, be in the moment and listen. It's not enough to just pay attention, OK? Anyone can do that. Here's the key to listening in improv and in every conversation. You have to be willing to change. If you're not willing to change when you're listening to someone, whether it's out there in the coffee room or at work or at home, then you're just waiting for your turn to talk. You're not truly collaborating. You've already made up your mind. You know what you're going to say. You're waiting your turn. And that person will know that. They'll know it by your face, your body language, and your tone. And collaboration will stop right there. So next thing, this is the exciting one. Yes and. Everyone say yes and. All right, great. What does yes and mean? It's the number one rule of improvisation. It means that when someone gives you an offer, and what an offer is is any sort of word or action or gesture, anything they give you, you accept it, yes, and you add to it, and, yes, and. It's so crucial for ideas, especially ideas, especially new ideas just in the incubation phase. They're not fully developed. You know that, and the person you're talking to knows that. So how can we just instill that we're going to yes and. We're not going to judge there. Well, I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to show you. We're going to, what I want you to do is this. Pair up with someone sitting next to you. Just lean in close to them. If you're sitting by yourself, join another group and become a three. That's OK, too. This is a very simple exercise. No one has ever been killed or hurt in the playing of this game. I can promise you that. So here it is. It's very simple. This game's called Word at a Time. And what you and your partner are going to do is create a long run-on sentence, OK? One person's going to speak first, and they can say any word they want. It's good to start with a nice, simple one, like when or I. And then the next person will respond. So say this person says I. This person can just say whatever follows on naturally. Be obvious. Went to the mall. OK? And you just carry on. It doesn't matter what you say. It's just that you stay in the moment. You're spontaneous. You keep that rhythm going, OK? Now, here's the, here's the thing I need to tell you. You are good at this game. You are good at this game right now. But I have planted your partner for you. It turns out that you don't know this, but I have planted them. They are a world-class, word-at-a-time player. Your partner is amazing at this game. So you can just let yourself fall into your partner's arms. They will carry you through this game. We're going to play it for 20 seconds, starting now. And when I put my hand up, I want you to put your hand up, too, so I know that you see me. Ready? Go. Start. <laughs> One word at a time. OK, hand in the air if you see me. OK, thank you, thank you. Good news, guys. You guys are all improvisers now. You've just done one of the games that we do on our very first session at MB Improv to get people in the flow of yes anding. You guys were laughing. I, heard, I saw smiles. I heard laughs. I saw the energy go up in the room. That's really exciting. At the basic principle of what was happening in that moment was you were making an offer of a word, and that's risky, and that person accepted it. And they gave it back to you, and they built on it. And that was risky for them. But they can trust you, because you took it and you gave it back. That's the principle of yes anding. So what I'm saying is, why are we doing this? Why are we talking about improvisation? Well, it's because in a few hours, we're going to go out and have our first coffee break, OK? I don't want you to have polite conversation when you're out there. This is a great chance. It's a great opportunity not to be missed. This group of people will not be together again. This is your one chance at it. So let's have great conversations. Let's embrace each other's ideas. Let's be playful and embrace failure and, it, and embrace risk. Let's listen to each other. Let's be deeply in the moment and be willing to be changed. And then let's take each other's ideas, as crazy as they may be, and instead of re rejecting them or judging them, let's add on them. Let's see where it goes. 
okay? If we do this, starting today, we'll have more amazing, inspiring, idea-generating conversations, and it's going to change every single day of your life. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.